Konstantinos Kenanidis, General Director of the Orthodox Academy of Crete, Specialist in Pastoral Counseling for Adolescents and Families, Doctor of Theology. The first question is about your academy, Theological Academy of Crete. Can you tell us something about your academy and uh, about some specific of its work? The Orthodox Academy of Crete is a, a historical uh, foundation, uh, started his function uh, 40 years ago by the previous metropolitan of Kisamos and Selinos Irenaeus. The academy started in order to open church to society and theology to sciences. The academy started the dialogue uh, to, from theology uh, to uh, sciences. Uh, until then, many uh, thousand conferences have been held in the academy, and uh, the most famous uh, World Association of Scientists, they come there because we're providing the ethical framework of sciences. And, for example, CERN is coming, mm -hmm. um, World Association of Molecular Biology, of Experimental Biology, uh, World Association of Astrophysics, of physics, of, ma of advanced mathematics, but also academy is a, a place that uh, many uh, ecumenical uh, events took places like uh, uh, Central Committee of Keck, uh, General Assembly of Keck, uh, the two years ago was um, the uh, Faith and Order Mm -hmm. General Assembly, and next year will be for the first time the Central Committee of WCC. So, uh, the Academy is a place that uh, witness the the Orthodox experience, the Orthodox spiritual life in all, all the world, all, in all domains. Uh, we have uh, an Institute of Theology and Ecology. We organize ourselves uh, international conferences every year. And we promote the um, approach that the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew started about the environment a few years ago. Uh, and uh, this approach that the origin of ecological disaster, of ecological crisis, is ethical, is more and more accepted by the international community. And we have experience of this, and we're happy to, uh, to give this uh, theological and ethical uh, dimension on, uh, on the environmental crisis. And uh, we have also an institute of uh, uh, bioethics. And we, we, we start this uh, November about uh, issues concerning um, bioethics and to inform people, to inform the clergy, to inform the theologians uh, what is going on and what is the, uh, the position and the approach of our church. Also we have um, a, pro a program about uh, knowing better orthodoxy. Orthodox groups uh, from all around the world come there, uh, not only orthodox but non-orthodox as well, to learn about orthodoxy. We have also a, a um, workshop of icon painting. Mm -hmm. We organize <coughs> icon painting courses with a lot of uh, workshops on uh, theology of the icon and uh, now we started a, a new program uh, about uh, uh, hot issues of our society. Uh, we had a few, a few uh, days ago at the first meeting on uh, a safe surfing in the internet. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of uh, children and parents and teachers came to the academy to listen of the unit of uh, e-crime unit of uh, the Greek police and uh, we'll uh, have more conferences on cyberbullying, on child pornography and so on. So the Academy is an institution that uh, <coughs> tried to witness uh, the orthodox spiritual life, the orthodox approach, orthodox theology in the every aspect of, uh, uh, of human life. You know in Russia a communist piece of our history is gone. But we 
uh, have a very big problem nowadays because uh, many professors, many specialists with, from universities, civic institutes, uh, say that theology is not a, a science. How can we show to other to our colleagues from civil universities, institutes, that uh, theology is a real science. And <coughs> I think I, I just answered on this question when I said that mm. uh, the, the biggest uh, international uh, scientific communities, mm -hmm. they come to us and uh, they can go wh wh where they, they, they want, maybe in a luxury resort to make the conference. But they come to the academy because, as they say, they need this promotion of ethical frameworks we, we, we provide. But to, to, to answer uh, more specifically to your question, uh, it's not a big issue to understand uh, how uh, uh, theology can be uh, cooperate and can be um, ha have a, um, cooperation with other sciences. If we stand to the differentiation of anthropological system, human sciences has been made by humans mm -hmm. to help humans. So they have no ontology, they have no eschatology. So theology as a sciences, science has a theology and eschatology and ontology. In, in simple words, human sciences cannot respond to existential issues of, you, of every person. It's impossible, mm -hmm. by nature. Mm -hmm. So, if we respect these anthropological uh, uh, borders, let's say, for example, uh, the, the prototype of human sciences is the man, as mm -hmm. Aristotle said. Mm -hmm. The center of everything is the man, the human. In theology, we said our prototype is theanthropological, is the, the, the anthropos is the uh, God man. Christ is our prototype. So, you see, if we respect this differentiation in, in anthropological level, we, we can have an excellent cooperation with sciences. And I'm, I'm talking about also from my experience. I was studying psychology mm -hmm. and theology. But I, 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 in the beginning, I was co a bit concerned how to combine. And I discovered that the fathers did the same. St. John Chrysostom, mm -hmm. St. Basil the Great, they've been great scientists. So they combined, they used the, the sciences. Because the, the sciences also, they have to, to, to help to describe phenomenon, but they cannot uh, give mm. to, to every human to be happy, to solve his existential issues or to save his soul. So it's a question of uh, an anthropological issue. So when we, we have discussions with the colleagues of civil, civic uh, universities, we have to, to uh, start for the same start point. So uh, the same anthropological point. If they don't accept uh, theology or, or uh, orthodoxy or Christianism, we cannot talk about it because we, we are talking with different start points. The, uh, speaking for our point of view, mm -hmm. I think the point is to how authentic is our words, how we really witness orthodox experience, orthodox spiritual life. This is the point, because if our words are simply human thinking and human um, uh, words with no uh, ontological uh, content, mm -hmm. So they are useless and they cannot convince anyone. This is something that uh, the theological faculties, the church itself, has to think. And that's why we, we are here. And uh, because we are concerned with this uh, phenomenon of uh, secularization that is, is hidden in our churches, in our faculties, and we are becoming uh, Christianity, orthodoxy, theology becoming unfortunately, ideology. Mm -hmm. And there is a big risk uh, in, uh, in our societies. It's everywhere the problem. Uh, that we have to, to, to protect the church, the, the faculties, for, for this big danger of uh, ideologization 
of, of uh, theology and spiritual life. How can modern theologian, modern researcher, modern priest be closer to this ideal of sin fathers? How can modern theologian use the results of our modern time, our modern science? Yeah, it's a, a very crucial question and I can answer like this. The mission of our church is to adapt the, the message of Christ, of resurrection, mm -hmm. to adapt all this, um, how you say, this um, rich tradition mm -hmm. of the fathers to everyday life. This is the mission. The danger is not to adapt, but to be assimilated. So in order to, to not be assimilated, not to be secularized, we have to have specific, well-structured, authentic spiritual criteria. So, it's no danger. So, the fathers did the same. They used the wisdom of the past, they have a spiritual uh, life, they have uh, the grace of God, and they spoke about, the, they gave solutions, actually, about the, the problems of their time. So, we have to do the same. So, we have to, to look to the wisdom of the past, to take what is like the bees, as St. Basil mm -hmm. said, and to take and to implant to, uh, and to give solutions in our uh, problems of our modern uh, uh, life, every, modern society in everyday life. So, in order to do this, it's not only sufficient, sufficient to have a good theological background or knowledge, or knowledge of the fathers, mm -hmm. it's not useful. We have to have this knowledge, but we have to, to have also a spiritual life, a spiritual experience, a, a faith, not religiosity, a faith. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and who, who can talk in our days, in, in the middle of, of people, in the church, in the conference, a theologian, and say, what I'm saying is the will of God? Who can say this? The fathers did. They did say this, so it's not a problem. If we are not able to do this, St. Maximus the Confessor said, if you're not, possible, if not able to witness what is the God will, God's will in everyday life, it's not a problem. You close your mouth and you pray. So I, what I want to say is that we have two currents in our societies. The first current is people, what in everyday life, they fa we face issues like, uh, um, let's say, the use of the internet, mm -hmm. like the artificial insemination. So what is the church position on this? If you look into the fathers, you cannot find it. It's impossible. So we have a current that says, if it's not in the scriptures, not in the father text, it's not orthodox, it's demonic, it's, <laughs> it's rejected. So they are in denial. They're in denial, of, they're not able to do this adaptation. They're in denial, this is egoism. So, uh, so they cannot say, well, I'm not doing this, I cannot, I'm not able to do this, so I'm in silence. So uh, they demonize everything new. This is the one current. Mm -hmm. The other current is, they say what is the position of the church, they say what everything comes to their mind, irresponsibly. So these two currents, is same dangerous. So we call them sometimes fundamentalists because they, go, they are going back to their foundation. That's the, they call them mm. fundamentalists because they cannot do this procedure to adapt the wisdom of the past to the everyday life. This is the mission of the church, the real mission of mm -hmm. the church. And I'm talking like uh, being a professor of uh, pastoral counseling. So if we cannot do this, it's better to be silent. And uh, I think this is what people expected from us. Thank you. Thank you very much.